show me how you did that. Wraps. Let's clear this sulfur sodden fucks out. Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra 2. We never heard from them again. I think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks, and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I... I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I... I stopped trying. Because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Now come on. Here I go. Off I go. If you're living up in a tower on a place called Devil's Peak, you might be some type of serial villain. I've been waiting for this! And that's how it's done. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Working, boss!
That's the last of them! Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easy. Here's the elevator, but it ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving forward. Look for another way up. tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head. What in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station? Unless you are, in fact, trying to suicide by Marauder? And you, Nioka, what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station? You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, he hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders? Running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. I see why Nioka tolerates you. Fine, I'll do the talking. By the hand of faith and my own cunning skill, I run this station. The Marauders may have other plans, and since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I have need of you. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Or we can call you Hiram on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that. Aside from you. You're here, and you're armed, aren't you? I know Nioka is, for sure. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property.
I think. Ah, Marauder free at last. I'll get the door. You hurry on it. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? That is the primary goal behind locking myself high in a tower. Phineas must have sent you... He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? Have you seen Doc Wells? The guy's ancient. You take any more time and he's liable to croak. I take offense to that. Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes. I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. Don't be ridiculous. We're resetting a broadcast tower, not filing taxes. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. Eternal, no. What is wrong with you? Who would ever design something like that? However, you're welcome to brew me a Rizzo Insta Coffee from the staff kitchen on your way back. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. Yeah, yeah, we heard you the first time. Let's just get this over with. Terrific. I'll be here. Absolutely. Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. 
important to you is not the same as important to me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wadsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra, too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Give my regards to Phineas. Why, he told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. What in the void blasted hell is that? armaments to defend Stellar Bay, but we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I am more than finished with you lot.
Some crew members are causing a disturbance. Destination reached. Scylla. Hey boss. Hey boss. Got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? Right, forgot about that. Though, shock and disbelief's a good way to put it. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Yeah. The captain said we might be getting a new recruit. That you, then? Sounds like Clyde's jumping to conclusions, but yeah. I'm Felix. You're on a first-name basis with Captain Harlow, huh? All right. Go on through. Got my sights on you. That machine stole my bit. Why do we even have one of these? Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the Groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man? I thought you were dead. Or throwing yourself against the walls of some re-education center. That's been five years, Clyde. The best thing you can say is, hey there, Hullhead? No, Felix. The best thing I can say to you is yet to come. Also, I'd like to have a word with your captain. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He's been watching out for us just as much as we've been watching out for him. Felix's family, mister. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. 
something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen, and I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy, that one day he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. Everyone in my crew proves their loyalty. No exceptions. Not even Felix. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Then Felix will have done me a favor and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. I don't contest your claim to Felix's services, but he is his own man, and we are all of us responsible for our own destinies. Hey boss is a point. You're talking about me like I'm not even here. I'm negotiating with your captain. You are his subordinate, at least for now. We're not a band of common pirates, Captain. We are revolutionaries. I expect a certain degree of intestinal fortitude from my soldiers. Trask was a coward. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant. Has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own and tucked tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. Clyde offered me a hand when nobody else would. I'd say I owe him a good turn. There you have it, Captain. A favor for an old friend. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember... I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. The dust bat casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste, but I'm going to be strong. You got to be more careful about what you say around Felix. He's a good guy, but real impressionable. I don't want him thinking it's okay to threaten folk. Well, I don't want him hurting people on account of me. I want him to be a better person. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Ah. <sighs> I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. I'm fine for overhauling an engine, maybe. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium, Jolliker's Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh on perfect at a place like that. 
Not today, no, but maybe someday. I know this is all a little crazy, Captain, but I think it's gotta be this place. I saw the lady who runs it on Aetherwave, and, well, she made everybody she dressed feel better. Confident. Thanks, Captain. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. I've been waiting for this! You have no idea how good the air on Groundbreaker smells until you've been trapped in a tiny bathroom with an overflowing toilet. Thanks again, friend. What usually happens on this partially pressurized rust bucket? Something broke. Well, actually two things broke. Time stood still. I was aware of nothing but the smell. Ugh, could have been days. Ah, shit. That means I haven't clocked out in days. Do you know what's happening on Terra One? You mind? Trying to have a moment here. Yeah, I was called that once upon a day. You need something? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you.
You're telling me you're on a first-name basis with Ms. Tennyson? Yeah, the promenade doesn't feel like I'm walking the surface of Tartarus. So that was you, huh? Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Please, just make it quick. Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something. He must have been recruiting. Gathering up his band of revolutionaries. Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know, Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with the fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Rufus. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Appreciate it. No offense meant, just been a long day is all. If you're here for... I'm afraid that's confidential, my dear. You here for a particular reason? I've got a love... How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest and go. Sorry. Business has been slow. Didn't quite catch that. Uh, you'll have to speak up. Glass ear? Nothing to fear. I'm sorry again. Huh? What? Huh. Of course. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. Passing through, minding my own business. 